Hello and welcome to this week's Two Minute Tuesday. We're sticking with our theme of pressurization and we're diving into air release. Air release is a critical part of a pressurization system and I'll start by explaining exactly what it is. The official definition is means by which pressurizing air is able to escape from the accommodation or other unpressurized space to outside the building. Essentially, we have to have air release as if we didn't and we just simply pumped air into the fire floor. What would eventually happen is the pressure would equalize as the air has nowhere to go and the products of combustion would have nothing to prevent them from flowing back towards the pressurized zone as there's no pressure differential. This is explained nice and simply in BSEN 12101 part 6 5.1.2.5. Air release shall be provided for ensuring that air flowing from the pressurized zone to an unpressurized space can leak to external air so as to maintain the pressure differential or open door airflow velocity between two spaces. So our aim is to keep the accommodation, any unpressurized zone, as close to atmospheric pressure as possible so as to make sure that we can maintain our pressure differential. This applies in a closed door scenario as set out in section 5.1.1 of part six. The aim is to establish a pressure differential across any leakage paths that will ensure that smoke moves away from the protected space. This is achieved by maintaining the protected space at a pressure higher than that of the fire zone. It is essential that adequate air release shall be provided from the accommodation to ensure that pressure differential is maintained. It's also just as important in an open door scenario as indicated in part six, 4.3.1. To achieve the minimum velocity of two meters per second through the open stair door, it is necessary to ensure sufficient leakage from the accommodation to the exterior of the building. In the later stages of fire development, more than adequate leakage will generally be provided by breakage of external glazing. However, it cannot be assumed that windows will have failed before fire service arrival, and it is therefore necessary to ensure that sufficient leakage area is available via the external facade, the ventilation ductwork, or specifically designed air release paths. So now we've been over what air release is and why it's so important, we'll finish up by briefly covering the three different methods of achieving air release. The first and simplest option is to use facade ventilation. However, this must be provided on more than one facade of the building. This is to overcome any adverse wind pressure. The second option is to use a natural smoke shaft. The third option is to use mechanical extract. It's important to be aware that only the air release on the fire story is to open. This is for exactly the same reasons we only open one vent into a fire story with a natural and mechanical smoke ventilation systems. We don't want to spread the products of combustion to another floor. I hope this overview of air release has been helpful. If you found it useful, please give it a like. If you'd like more content like this, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye for now.